Dubai has cleavage. <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Play Canon Standardition, the PC. Okay, I've got unlimited time limit now, but that doesn't mean nothing, because Cam Studio can't even save 9 minute videos at the moment, I mean, it's terrible. Let's continue. Whatever we're facing, it's not human even in form. That makes me realize all the more exactly how little I know about what I'm fighting. What now? I'll go. Yeah. You don't mean... She nods. But you can't walk! Wait! Do not! <laughs> the loudest noise yet immediately below us. And Mai stands up. Mai! Wait! She takes two or three steps and then... <laughs> she leaps. In one breath, Mai flew down from a height of what was likely more than twenty steps. And... The point of her blade makes a large arc as she slices right through the space leading downstairs. Now nothing moves. Silence falls. As my eyes adjust to the new scene before me, everything finally falls into place. With her legs no longer able to launch her at the gra enemy, her arms no longer able to add strength to the blows, Mai had one plan left. Falling from some place high, she was able to put her entire weight into the blow. Letting gravity do the work for her, she didn't hesitate to do so despite the risk involved. I stare after her with a mixture of admiration and disbelief. Remembering myself, I drop my now unnecessary sword and rush down the stairs. Mai! I crouch beside her and grasp her shoulders. What were you thinking? Are you alright? He pushed her. Eh? What? All of a sudden, I can't tell which way is up. My difficulty is easily explained by the fact that the floor, ceiling and walls are currently taking turns at being the answer. <laughs> it's my violent collision with one of these. At last, that stops me spinning. I already knew these things were capable of throwing a human across the room. Now I know they can do it two at a time. My! I grab her at once, praying she'll be alright. She meets my eyes and nods. Perhaps she's even telling the truth. I wish I could say the same, but perhaps because I used it to shield my, my right arm is shot through with pain doesn't feel like it's going to be much use in the immediate future. Should we run for it? I could make it to the old wing carrying. I exaggerate. In reality, I suspect that claim is highly dubious. At the same time, I don't see any alternative. Mai forces me to take her sword instead. What do you want me to do? I left my own sword on the landing. Maybe she just thinks I'm in a better position to use the one we have left. What about you? Mai slips out of my arms and stands up. Hastily I stand up to join her, shifting the sword to my left hand, which still feels usable. I feel a breeze begin to press us from behind, building like the flowing tide. As ordered, I turn to face it, stepping between its source and my unarmed comrade. Her voice comes softly from behind me. Her voice hangs in the air. I turn to look back at her again, but she's gone. I have no idea what she's planning now, but I see no option but to trust her and do as she commands. If I valued my safety, I'd run for my life at this point. But I have not the slightest intention of doing that. Right now, what's driving me is the desire to do something for my sake. Since she told me herself what she wants, I have little choice in the matter. Ah, I see. 
Right now, I just put the do something for my sake higher than my own safety. I realized that. It was quite simple, but to me, that was quite amazing. Just when did I end up that deeply in love with her? I lash out at random, more in the hope of unsettling my foe than hitting it, then set off a pace, hugging the wall. A few swishing and rattling in behind me hints at pursuit. Is it comfy? I throw myself to the ground. Something brushes against my calf as I fall, a missed attack. As I slide to a halt, the air ahead ribbles and shakes. The enemy has passed right over me. Again, it dashes in the other direction. I yank myself to my feet, sprint to the stairs, swing into the wall by the handrail, and dive down. Taking the stairs at such speed is tricky. It takes all my concentration to keep my footing. My bow shares no such limitation, whether it's merely that it has no feet and hence no footing to lose, or whether it's actively pressing the attack. I sense it right behind me. A gentle brushing against my back could be its fangs straining for flesh, and snapping shut bare millimeters short. Half running, half falling, I reach the ground floor, and don't pause to take my bearings. I don't have time. Instead, I leap out from the stairwell, and fly right across the corridor, my sword preceding me, hilt first. The hilt smashes into the opposite window. Moments later, I land dropping to my knees with a violent impact. Splinters of glass prick into my skin. It's painfully obvious that blood has been drawn. But I don't have time for that island. I grit my teeth, stand up and turn around. The hole I came out through is being dwarfed by another as my pursuer follows me outside. Gavers, this is it. If you put attack, Yuichi dies. But we're not gonna make him die here. If you want me to show you that scene, just ask and I'll make a bonus episode. But we'll just parry. Mai told me to block and parry, but I'm down to one arm. <sighs> I strain to deflect the incoming blows with a flat of the sword. In practice, I end up defending myself more by dodging than by parrying. But I don't think, really think that matters. All I really have to do is escape. That's all the responsibility I've been given. I can leave the rest to Mai, who I can trust, who has never failed or betrayed me. I turn again, trying to hold the sword ready, just in case. But running with it turns out not as easy as I thought. With my right hand out of action, the weight of the sword is throwing my balance off. I'm going to have to ditch it, which I may as well do so. As aggressively as possible, I turn half around again, swinging it, and as the blade comes level with the ground, I let go. It flies straight, unexpectedly straight and stop short, plunging into the solid air behind me. The hit is palatable. Something else is even more palatable, though. The ferocity of the pursuit. The sword twists and squirms in the air, in the quaking of its incorporeal body. This does not impede it at all. On the contrary, the distance between us shrinks rapidly. The awful presence draws near, plowing through and scattering the folds of drifted snow. It may be invisible. But that by no means prevents me from imagining how hideous its continence must be to behold. I shrink back, weak kneed and tremble. So much for aggression. The only visible result of my desperate counterattack has been to leave me more terrified than before. Are my feet even moving now? I couldn't even tell anymore. I'm just struggling to push myself along now. Struggling to push the school away behind me. Even as I flee. Even though my every nerve should have been expecting it, the attack still takes me by surprise. <sighs> my torso is twisted with a sharp and pleasant sound. My mind lurches. A sour taste fills my nose and mouth. Bile escapes my lips. My left shoulder, the one that had still been useful, goes limp. I plunge forwards into the ground. My face skims through the snow. As I slide, I tumble, leading on my back, landing on my back, gritting my teeth, I force my eyes open and upwards, to stare death in the face. Next time, on Let's Play Canon Standard Edition for the PC.